If you've been an active member of the 3D community in recent years, chances you've already come across MetaHuman, a character creation program that seems to be slowly but surely on the rise to become the standard in this field. Because frankly speaking, I keep seeing it everywhere. However, the journey to reach that goal isn't free of competition because on the other side, there is another software that goes by the name of Character Creator 4, which is very popular too, and it is coming with other ideas in mind to claim the number one spot for itself, or is it? So what are these tools, what are the differences between them, and which one is gonna be better for your projects and your own needs? As you might or might not expect, long before Character Creator 4 came into existence, it had three predecessors that were all brought to life by Reillusion, a company that emerged at the dawn of the new millennium in the year 2000. By the introduction of Crazy Talk, a casual 2D photo animation that was designed to make any image talk, so let's say it was a different time back then. Later on, after many adventures to make it in the animation industry, they launched the first iteration of Character Creator in 2015, with other versions releasing along the way, until Character Creator 4 in 2022, and ever since then, it has been standing tall as the main software of the company alongside iClone and Cartoon Animator. As for the other side of the spectrum, we have MetaHuman, a tool that was brought to us by none other than Epic Games as their long-anticipated solution to design digital humans and digital characters for fields that overlap with character creator such as games, films, and apps. This one was released in 2021, following the acquisition of a company called Trilateral in 2019 as one of their purchases to work on the MetaHuman project. And from that day, both of these tools have been the frontrunners in terms of character creation. But now the question is, which one is actually better? Let's first take a look at MetaHuman, which is, in my view, the less useful among the two. But hey, it gets the job done. And this is part of what made it successful. The reason behind this is how unique the MetaHuman workflow is compared to any other character creation suite. When you open the software for the first time, you will be greeted by a lineup of characters that you can choose from as a starting point for the character that you're gonna create. Then you will be taken to the actual workspace of the software where you have a timeline to play and select animations as well as the character editing settings at the left corner of the screen. However, the most important one of the bunch is the blend feature. And look, the idea is really simple for this one. You basically select additional metahumans to blend their details with your main character, which in theory can offer an infinite amount of facial detail variations. On each face, you have small circles that represent control guides for areas such as lips, nose, and so on. And by moving them around, you can blend the different meta humans together, and if this is not enough, you can also take advantage of the sculpting tools to further refine the faces by making them thicker or thinner, however it is very limited, and not like what is found in the actual tools, I mean sculpting tools like ZBrush or Blender. On top of that, you also have menus for things like skin, eyes, hair, and body proportions, or you can choose one of the presets, change colors, or further edit it with sliders, like for example, in the skin section, you can add things like freckles or wrinkles among many other things. On the other side, we have Character Creator, which probably has the right to say, Mana Human ain't got nothing on me. Anyways, in terms of layout, the user interface is also relatively simple and a bit similar to that of Mana Human, but with a lot of more details on the screen. We have the typical 3D viewport, an animation layer in the middle, as well as a set of menus on the left side, starting with the free resources, where you have characters to pick from as a base, as well as animations, clothes, makeup, and so on. And if not, you can always start with a neutral base model. Now, let's suppose you want to adjust it. And just like I mentioned earlier, the workflow for this one is very different compared to MetaHuman, and it does that with what is known as more of Gizmo. Despite how nonsical the name may be, what it can do is quite simple. First, you can start by enabling the Morph Gizmo at the top right corner, and then it is split into two different categories. For the basic workflow, you have these yellow marks that pop up as you move around or within the face menu. 
then you can easily tweak elements like height and weight by simply clicking and dragging with the mouse. But for those who want to get to the next level, you can use the more detailed Morse menu, or you can particularly edit anything you want and however you want by just moving the available sliders around. For example, in the noise menu alone, you can change the likes of scale, width, depth, the nostrils, and the list goes on in a way similar to character creation screens in video games, but with much more detail. Based on that, if I were to ask your opinion about which one is gonna be better, what would you say? I know every one of us has their preferences, but from what I can see, Character Creator 4 offers more options, with sliders to edit practically anything. For example, in the body proportions alone, Mana Human offers a series of weights and heights with limited adjustments, unless a third party software is used. Whereas in Character Creator 4, we can adjust those to our liking and even edit the smaller areas of the character's body and face. Besides, in CC4, you can also create your own hair with the hair builder, and it is way easier to make stylized or children's characters and just like how they say, the sky is your limit. It is also worth mentioning that in both software, there are methods to import characters from software such as ZBrush to further edit, rig, or add animations, but how does that work? In terms of animation inside these two software, I think we have a more fair comparison. However, I think it is still kind of one-sided, and here is why. In the case of MetaHuman, we have three main ways to animate the characters. First, we can load any pre-made custom animation that works with MetaHuman, export them somewhere to animate them, or use performance capture to capture your facial expressions and transfer it to the digital character. And for Character Creator 4 on the other side, while the facial motion capture feature was left for iClone, another software from Reillusion I think is better for this task. First, just like MetaHuman, it does support pre-made animations with a huge library to enjoy, as well as an auto-rig feature to automatically rig imported characters with the ability to tweak it, but it can be done with MetaHuman too and an expression and wrinkle system and profiles that you can use to apply wrinkles to any of your characters, or to add both realistic and cartoon expressions. Another area where Character Creator 4 is renowned is when it comes to clothes. Two of them can assign clothes from the library, but to be honest, it is a day and night difference. And the secret behind this is that Character Creator 4 can import any piece of clothing or prop and manually assign it to the characters that you can animate by adding a collision volume. Obviously, it is not exactly like magic, even though it is pretty close. You would probably hit some bumps along the way, but it is a solid tool. As a final thought, I'm not here to bash MetaHuman. In fact, it is an excellent tool that I personally enjoy using, and one that's already making a lot of impact across multiple industries, and one that is making great impact across multiple industries, and it can be used as a core technology on any character creation pipeline, like we can see in the Matrix Awakens and Unreal Engine 5 experience. However, when we compare it to Character Creator 4, it's hard not to agree that the second is way better, but it is not free. It comes with a cost, of course, a big one to a certain extent. But on the other hand, MetaHuman is free. And I'm gonna close off with a quote from a 3D artist who used both software professionally and said, it has been a while since I used MetaHuman, but compared to Character Creator 4, I found it extremely limiting. I do my character design in Character Creator 4. Not only it is really good for actual characters themselves, but I also found it really good for applying clothing assets that I've got from somewhere else. For instance, it is pretty good at allowing you to import a clothing asset as a prop and automatically assign skin weight and then reuse the new clothing asset for multiple characters of different shapes. And there you have it guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.